would like to read a scripture to you. It's not in the lesson this morning, but it came to me this morning as I was thinking about coming to church. In, in the book of Psalms, David says something concerning uh, uh, a thing here. And I want to read it in 118.24, if I can find it real easy. Yeah, here it is right here. 118.24, listen. This is the day, you know it by heart, this is the day which the Lord hath made. He will, we will, we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. And this morning, we that are uh, saved, we should, that should draw us closer, that should help us because, listen, this is the day that the Lord has made. And so it's not yesterday and it's not tomorrow, but it's today. And this is the day that we've come to the house of God to uh, read his word and to hear his word and to sing songs of praise to him. And so uh, this, is a, this is a thing that we need to do, and that is to rejoice in the word of the Lord. Amen. So we, we wanted to read that to you. Now we want to turn to Luke Gospel in the 14th chapter. <clears throat> in verse 1 <clears throat> and Jesus is speaking some parables and healing some and all this and I, uh, I pray that this will be a blessing to you and uh, that uh, you can get away saying it's been good to be in the house of the Lord and tomorrow this will come to your mind and the next day and, and the Lord will refresh your memory and your soul and, and give you an encouragement to go a little bit farther because we need all the help we can get as far as going down the road just a little bit farther and getting uh, closer to the Lord. So in verse 1 of chapter 14 of the book of Luke, he says, It came to pass... As he went into the house of one of the chief Pharisees to eat bread on the Sabbath day, that they watched him. Now, he's going to tell us later on about being bidden to a certain uh, meal. But here he brings this. I wanted to read this to bring this out. And he says in verse 2, uh, on this, well, we'll go back to the first one. And he says, uh, the Pharisee... And it came to pass as he went into the house of the Pharisees to eat bread on the Sabbath day that they watched him. Now, they, they loved that Sabbath day to the point that they, uh, they didn't want to do anything in, in any kind of work or anything like this. And they was always using that Sabbath day to hinder people. And they were always using that Sabbath day to criticize uh, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Notice this, sir. He says... And verse 2, And behold, there was a certain man before him which had the dropsy. And Jesus answering said unto the lawyers and to the Pharisees, which were the ones that were given all the problems, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day? Hmm. They were caught off guard. They didn't know what to say. Now listen to this. And they held their peace, and he took him and healed him and let him go. So they wanted to criticize the Lord Jesus Christ, but right. they didn't know how to answer him because, listen, uh, as, he, as he continues healing, uh, see, saying this, he says something else to them and, and to buffet them and to tell them, hey, this is the reason why that you did not say anything to me because he said in verse 5, as he gives an example here, and answering them in verse 5, uh, after they held for peace, and answering them said, which of you having an ass or an ox fall into the, a pit and will not straightway pull him out on the Sabbath day? <laughs> and so, listen, you know, and I know, and we all know this morning that they by no, would not by any chance let that ox or that um, mule stay in that ditch for a, um, another day and might die. Right. And so they would more than likely, and they didn't say it, in, but he knew what they would do. Right. And he said they would, uh, and, and, and so they would more than likely have grabbed a rope or something and pulled the thing out. But he says in verse 6, and they could not answer him again to these things. And so here's two questions that he asked 
the Pharisees and the lawyers about what they would do on the Sabbath when they had they had cornered him and said, uh, uh, wanting to know about this man that was uh, sick, what he's going to do about it. And so uh, he he had taken this man, and they didn't have anything to say against it because they could not. And this was one of the things that Jesus often done it was to ask a question by answering a question or answering a question by asking. And so he had put it right to them down right on the floor that it needs to be. And they felt so guilty about the thing right. that they uh, could not answer him. And, uh, you know, it's the same way with me this morning when I get to praying and when I get to asking the Lord to help me and do these things, I feel so unworthy, mm -hmm. so, so down hard because Listen, I, I cannot, I cannot uh, do what I want to do. I cannot live as close to the Lord as I want to. And I feel so uh, down sometimes when I ask him because, listen, it's an everyday, ever hour thing with me mm -hmm. to ask the Lord for guidance, for help, and for mercy. Mm -hmm. And so, listen, uh, this, is, this, is, this is a natural thing for a saved soul to ask the Lord for these things which they they were under the law they wanted they did they did the law they loved the law and they used it for their own advantage and to persecute people so we get to verse 7 as Jesus is sitting there he said he put forth a parable to those which were bidden when he marked how they chose out uh, choose out the chief room uh, saying unto them when thou art bidden of any man to a wedding, sit not down in the highest room, lest a more honorable man than thou be bidden of him. Now here he's trying to get across a, a thing this morning about not being all this high-minded and proud and boastful of yourself. Right. And when they would go into these weddings or whatever, they wanted to get the high seats and it was, they was recognized as being honorable people. And so they wanted to get into this, but listen, he brings up the, the thing here of, uh, of a person that is not carrying the honor that he should, or he's not as honorable as somebody else that's on the way. And so he said here uh, in verse nine, and he that bade thee and him come and say to thee, give this man place and thou, be and thou begin with shame to take the lower room. And so this, this morning, to me, is what he's trying to get across to us this morning as his children and, and, as, and to recognize how little, how little we are in, 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 in trying to serve him. Right. We try to serve him and we try to uh, pray to him and we try to, uh, to read his word. But listen, we are not really and truly worthy to come before him and praise him because listen, he is so great Amen. and he is so uh, loving that listen, what little we got is within this old flesh and this old flesh despises it. That's the reason why the man here wanted to get the higher place because of his flesh. He had mm -hmm. had a desire to boast of himself and to show uh, uh, how great he was. And so this is what Jesus is warning to them. He's warning us this morning also the same thing. Listen, not to be boastful, right? not to be boastful, but to be humble. Amen. And the, 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 the humbler you are, the more boastful you are, and, and if you can get my drift on this, but listen, you're, you're closer to the Lord when you're humble, and that's the only way to get to the Lord, and, and through humbleness. Amen. And so he said here in, in uh, verse 10, but when thou art bidden, go and sit down in the lowest place or room, that when he that bade thee come, cometh, he may say unto thee, friend, go up higher, then shall thou have worship or honor or glory in the presence of them that sit at meet with thee. And this morning, there's nothing no more honorable this morning than when you're serving God and you know 
And you know he's putting his approval on it. You know that he's answering your prayers. When you have contact with Amen. him, there's nothing no greater. And it's the same way with this man right here that when he took the whole place, and that's where we need to be this morning at the feet of Jesus. Amen. Is to stand there face to face with him because, listen, we have no, we have no right to that. But we need to be humble and be at his feet. And listen, that way we're strong. Mm -hmm. And here he's, he's showing the, the thing here of the man that took the lower place. And when the man came in, and listen, and, and, and this, is, this is the greatest thing about it. He recognized him and he honored him. And, he him. and the thing of it is this morning, that's our desire this morning is for God to to honor us and to desire us and when we can when we can feel his presence and when we can realize that hey that we've talked to someone or we give evidence of of salvation to them and they you see that bright look on their face or, or and they understand something like that listen this morning there cannot be anything any greater than Amen. that because listen that's what we're here for that's what we need to do is is to uh, honor and glorify the Lord and through our mouth and through our, our, our actions and to uh, say to this world, listen, I'm, I'm working for the Lord. I'm standing Amen. on the Lord's side. I'm, I'm saved and I want you to hear what I have to say. And if you don't and if they don't, that's fine. But listen, you have done your work. And so here he had done his work and so he said uh, here in verse 11, for, and for whosoever exalteth himself shall be abased and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted and so right. this is this is the plan this is the work this is pleasing to god this morning that we keep our lips close and not to be spurting out stuff that we don't need to say, mm -hmm. thoughts that we don't need to say. But listen, that we need to, if there's anything comes to us, we need to say, Lord, bless that person. Help that person. Amen. Not to criticize them because, listen, criticism always comes back to you. And the first thing you know, then you're in the same condition because, listen, that is... That is not of God when we criticize someone because that's not what he did for me and you. Right. Amen. He, he died for me and you and he, he loved me and you. And listen, I know he didn't look at my stinking works and, right. and, and all this because listen, if he had of, uh, he might have seen something different, but he come here, he come here with the with the with the job of if you want to call it a job with the authority to forgive me of my sins and he came here and the way he did it was that he died on the cross of calvary and shed his blood for the atonement of my sins and but me i stand there and i criticize criticize someone listen that is not pleasing to God. Right. And Amen. so this morning we need to understand what, 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 who we're serving and what we're, what we're doing that's, that's not pleasing to him. And so he said uh, here in verse uh, 12, then said he all to him that bade him, when thou makest a dinner or a supper, call not thy friends nor thy brethren neither thy kinsmen nor thy rich neighbors, lest they also bid thee again and recompense thee be made free. So the recompense be made free, they, he, he's saying this morning that we, that we as, as children of God don't need to love this world and what it has to offer because here on the recompense and all this the the ones that he invited or the they 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 felt obligated to to re to re-invite them but he says when you do this when you when whatever it might be and, and it's to the poor he says here you 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 bid them and when you have something that's that's good 
uh, that can help them. You bid them to this thing because, listen, they're not able to pay you back. Right. And, and he's talking about poor and worthy things. He's talking about poor in spirit. And listen, that's the ones that we need to really and truly uh, talk to is those that are poor in spirit and poor in this world of things and they can be rich as a king and still be poor as Joe's turkey. Amen. You know that? But the thing of it is this morning, uh, we don't recognize that. And we, first thing we do is we mark this well. He's a real good friend and he's got this and he's got that and he's got that. And uh, I might, you know, I might need some of that sometime or he might give me some. But the thing of it is, listen, it goes back to self and the flesh. Mm -hmm. and, the, and that's the wrong way to think about this thing. But when you can help someone that needs help, listen, do it. And, 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 and I know in another place in the Bible there, it says for you to loan not uh, desiring payment back. And that's, you know, if, if someone needs to borrow something from you, you don't send, you don't loan it to them because that you can make that much again, according to the scripture. But you borrow it, knowing, or you loan it, knowing that you probably won't ever get it back. Right. But the thing of it is, what do we pay God back? Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, so... He he gave us he gave us the riches of heaven. Amen. And, Amen. You know, and so many people don't want to, so many people don't want to uh, even uh, honor him by coming to church. Yeah. Uh, honor him by uh, speaking to someone that needs uh, 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 a little encouragement or loaning something to some poor Joe out there that ain't got but one pair of pants to wear and and no money to to feed his family. But listen, the only way they'll do that when well, you sign this note, you can borrow some money. Mm. And if he, then they've got their eye on if he's got anything. So that's the wrong, that's the wrong attitude. Yeah. And people, God is not pleased with us Amen. doing that. So uh, it's, it's something that, it's something that we need to consider this morning. So then here in, uh, in verse 13, but when thou makest a feast, call the poor, the main, the lame, and the blind. Now, this is not the, he does this, he tells us the, the same thing over in, the, in uh, another part of the chapter. So this is the ones that you are to uh, try to help. These are the ones that, that the love of God should go out towards you because listen, hey, look at yourself where you was at. Look at, the, at yourself, you was poor, wretched, blind, and on your way to hell. And the Lord Jesus Christ come and died for your sins Amen. and paid the price. And God calls you through the Holy Spirit. And now you're rich and you're on your way to heaven. So why not? Why not talk to these people that are in these conditions here and help them along the way? Because, listen, uh, you know, uh, sometimes if you miss these chances, you miss you miss one of the greatest opportunities in the world. Right. There's nothing. There's nothing no greater than to help someone out. And five years down the road or something like that, they come back and say thank you, mm -hmm. thank you. And and hey, I'm saved. You know. So these are the things that we need to really and truly uh, think about. So here, but he says here. If you if you if you if you make a, a feast and call these to him, he says in verse fourteen, and thou shalt be blessed, for they cannot recompense thee, for thou shalt be recompensed at the resurrection of the just. When you stand before God, you may not get that money back that you loaned that old poor Joe. You may not get that that. Food and that clothing that you give him back, you may have to do a little bit uh, uh, without by yourself. But listen, people, there's a day coming when you're going to stand before God and you're going to be judged and you're going to have uh, rewards there if you've done it in the name of the Lord. And here's what he's talking about. He says, you'll be recompensed at the resurrection of the just. And so what a payday. Amen. What a payday that'll be. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah. And so this is a, this is a thing. Mm -hmm. God has given us this stuff of the earth, and He's letting us He's letting us use it. 
and you use it for his honor and for his glory and this is what this is the thing that you will that you can stand before God when you when you use this stuff right and and, and help and help those that needs help listen if you do it with a heart of love don't go out here and be a pretense and don't go out here and be a, 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 a something that you're just a, a making out like to show people how good you are. But listen, you do it because you love the, 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 the Lord and you love the people. And he says, when the time comes, when you stand before God, hey, you're going to be paid back. Amen. And people, God, God has got more riches he says there in one place in Psalms, it's cattle of a thousand hills. Listen, he's got it all. He's right. got it all. He'll keep it all, and, he, he, and he's got it for you and for me. And when we stand before God, those crowns are going to be passed out. And listen, what a wonderful thing it'll be that we can take those crowns and, and lay them down in Jesus' feet. Yeah. And so, listen, there's nothing, there's not a greater payday than that. Uh, you say, well, give it something away. Listen, I'm telling you, when you give something to some of your uh, your loved ones, listen, and they need it, and you want to give it to them, there ain't nothing no better than that. Right. And that's the way it will be with Jesus and, and God when you stand before them and the rewards are passed out. So here in verse 15, and when one of them that said it meet, now here's one that, that, that heard a little something. He said, said that meet with him and heard these things. He said unto him, blessed is he that eateth bread in the kingdom of God. And so when he said the, the, uh, at the resurrection and this man here heard this thing, listen, he said he is the one that's going to be blessed. He realized that he was with a bunch of thieves and robbers and things there, but he said this man will be blessed that stand before God. And so then said in uh, this and in verse 16, then said he unto him, a certain man made a great supper and bade many and his and sent his servants at supper time to say to them that were bidden, come for all things are now ready. And of course, we know this morning, we know this morning that this is what Jesus is trying to talk about, about the call, the call to the lost, the call to those saying, come on in, come on in, the, the meal is fixed. But listen, what happened? For all things were now ready, and they all with one consent began to make ex excuse. Mm -hmm. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee have me excused. Mm -hmm. Now listen, it's an excuse. Mm -hmm. And he got just exactly what he wanted. He got an excuse. Uh, and, and, and the thing of it is, first of all, look at it worldly. Who goes out here and buys a hundred acres of ground or a, 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 a tenth of an acre and don't first go and look at it and see if they can use it or not? Listen, it's an excuse, and that's the same way it is this day with, with the world. Listen, God is calling through the, through the preaching of man and he's calling through the Holy Spirit and they're saying, oh yeah, but I, I, don't, I don't think I can live it. I don't think that I can do that and I, I'm gonna just wait before I die and then I'll, but that's the excuse, people. Right. And they're so, it's so easy to make an excuse because the devil, the devil has got plenty of them in his pocket. Amen. And he'll come along and hand you one. Yeah, tell them this, tell them this, tell them this. And so here again, in our reading, he says here in verse 19, and another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen and I go to prove them. I pray thee, save me, uh, have me excuse. And it was, he was, this this thing of uh, proving was testing and he had to take those oxen out there and see if they would pull together, if they would plow together or uh, if they were fat or lean or whatever. And listen, he'd already bought them. Mm -hmm. So he's lying through his teeth, you know. You don't, you don't, you just don't do things like that. And but the thing of it is, that's that's the people this morning that are rejecting the call from the Lord Jesus Christ and from the Holy Spirit of God. These people have this excuse, and they continue to use them, and are using worldly possessions to say, "No, I don't. 
have no need to that right, right now. Maybe, maybe later down the road. Mm. And uh, the Bible says our one place when the when the rich man had all of this abundance of wealth, and he said, oh, "What am I going to do with it? I know I'll build me, I'll build, tear down these barns and build bigger ones." And God said to him, "Thou fool, mm -hmm. this night thy soul shall be required, and then whose will it be?" Mm -hmm. And it's the same way with this man, these people here that bought. This property, uh, this these animals, this all this, and listen, they they were in dangerous condition. I'll put it that way. And so here again, uh, in verse uh, verse twenty, verse twenty, and another said, "I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come." Well. There wasn't nothing wrong with uh, this situation, but the thing that it was, was the man ruling the house or was the, was the woman ruling the house? There you go. You think about that. And listen, uh, if the man had been uh, right with the Lord and his wife had said something, he, he could have said, well, I'm going to go and you can stay here or I don't know if she had the invitation or not. But the thing of it is, that's that's some of the, that's some of the hindrances that this world has if they're not if man and woman are not living close to God and trying to serve them. Listen, they're going to get in trouble. They're going to get in a, in a seesaw back and forth, and one's going to say you need to do this, and the other say you need to do that, and and all, and they can't agree. And listen, it's good. It's good this morning to. Think about these things because, listen, we encounter them every day. Mm -hmm. and, and, the, and, the, and the devil, like I said, he's got a pocket full of them. So here again, so I'm, I'm fixing close. In verse 21, so that servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to the, his servants, Go out quickly into the streets and, and the lanes of the city and bring in hither the poor. Here we go again. Bring in the poor the main and the halted and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done. Mm -hmm. And yet, and yet, there is room. And listen, people, that was a long time ago. That was a long time ago. And I guarantee you, I want to assure you this morning that there's still room. Amen. It's still there. Mm -hmm. And all we have to do is just abide by God's word and listen because there's no there's no there's no reason to get to, to thinking hey uh, there ain't gonna be room for me in heaven or there's not gonna be room for me at the wedding because listen he says that and 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 the Lord said unto the servant go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be may be still and be filled and so again. There was plenty of room. Verse 24. For I say unto you that none of these men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. Mm. And so, you know, those that reject the call, and, and you can use it in any way you want to, but those that reject the call or uh, push things away like that and put it off and off, guess, hey, they're in danger. Mm. They're in danger. And, uh, and I'm not going to say they're going to die and go to hell because I don't know they're in. But the thing of it is that there can be a change of heart. And listen, that that is something this morning that we need to realize this morning also is that there can be a change. Mm -hmm. And it should give us an incentive to go out there and talk to these people that spit on your face and slap you in the face and, 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 and criticize you and curse you and all this. But listen, it's still... It's still what we're supposed to love. Mm -hmm. It's still supposed to be what that we have a desire to do is to go out to the poor and main and to those that are uh, unbelievers and, and, and speak to their hearts. Yeah. We thank you for your attention. We want to ask you to go to the Lord in word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this opportunity that we've had. Uh, we thank you for the words that you let us speak. We thank you for the word that we read. And surely this word that we've read is true. And Father, we just pray that it'll go out uh, into the audience and out into the world through the computer. And Father, that there be some out there that hears this 
And Father, that they will be concerned about their soul. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, we pray and thank you for this day and our blessings. Amen. Amen. Amen.